For anybody who is interested in anything aeronautical, they quickly learn that when it comes to flying, there's a whole pile of acronyms. And guess what? RPAS is one of them, and since you're here, you probably know what RPAS stands for. Now, the other thing that people who fly have a fascination with is definitions. Okay, all right, maybe you don't have a fascination, but definitions are important. They're the fundamentals of understanding what it is that you're talking about when you start to try to maybe decipher some of those acronyms and or as well simply discuss key components of your craft. So in this section, we're going to take a look at, well, a few of the acronyms to start, but we're going to spend most of our time working through some of the core definitions related to flying an unmanned aerial vehicle. So we'll begin with those acronyms. More specifically, the what do we call ourselves when we're involved in the pilotless aircraft world? Well, pilotless aircraft, of course, are increasing leaps and bounds in terms of their ability, their technology, their design, and it's sort of been going through this phase where everybody's saying, we really don't quite know what to call ourselves. It's a little bit like the days of perhaps Wilbur and Orville Wright. They were figuring stuff out and simple little things like, well, naming an aileron an aileron was, what, what do we call it? So for us, when we talk about our names, we've got a number of different ones and all of them have been assigned an acronym. We've got RPA, Remotely Piloted Aircraft. We've got UASs, Unmanned Aerial Systems. We've got UAV, Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. And then we've got what has become the standard, or more so quickly becoming the standard through ICAO and Transport Canada of RPAS, Remotely Piloted Aerial Systems. Now, the one that the general public tends to refer to any of these as is drones. Now, I'll admit, personally, I don't really like that name it envisions, you know, just uh, kind of, well, dumb, <laughs> you know, uh, aircraft. I mean, a drone is a big, huge, fat bumblebee, right? So that being the case, it's one of the reasons why I don't like drones. Now, in addition to RPAS, you will see throughout this course UAV used extensively. And admittedly, that's partly because, well, that seemed to be initially the direction that Transport Canada was leaning. So if I sometimes refer to items as UAVs, or you see that in our presentations as opposed to the RPAS, that's why. All right, so what is a remotely piloted aircraft? According to the definition, it's a aircraft that you can navigate that you can fly other than a balloon, a rocket, or a kite that is operated by a pilot who is not on board. So when we use this definition, remember that we don't include anything of a balloon design, a rocket design, or a kite design. It is going to be something like this item that that fellow is throwing, looking something vaguely like an airplane or perhaps a helicopter of some sort. Now when it comes to these devices, we sometimes have autonomous devices. In this case, this is a system that isn't designed to allow pilot intervention in the management of flight. So in the case of, say, Amazon, where we've all been hearing of them developing devices that will shuttle around all by themselves delivering parcels, we would call those autonomous. We're going to concentrate more so on these systems where we have a lot more hands-on as we fly them. We might actually have the control stick many times. So that being the case, we have key core components to these systems. 
So the elements of a remotely piloted aircraft system will include the aircraft itself, a control station, command and control links, and as well any other system elements that are required for the flight operation. So, till the next presentation, I'm Aaron for pilottraining.ca.